Hello everyone, Hyper here, and welcome to the Big Dumb Strats video for Mythic Hivemind. If you've watched any of our previous guides, you will know that we'll cover general strategy, tanking, healing, and DPS. Joining me are Shampi and Lozi to explain the healing and tanking sections of this fight. Also, if you prefer to read your guides rather than watch them on YouTube, you can check out my written version over on Wowhead, the link to which can be found in both the description box and it will be pinned in the comments section. Also, if there's only one specific section that you want to watch, I will have the timestamps in the comments section. Before I even mention anything related to strategy, here's a little advice whether or not you should go to Shadhar or Hivemind after you've defeated the first three bosses. Generally, Hivemind is regarded as an easier boss, most guilds tend to prefer it. However, if your raid has really strong single target DPS and overwhelmingly have 2 minute cooldown classes as your DPS players, then you might have an easier time on Shadhar. The mythic changes on this fight are not very significant because if you do the mechanic properly, then you will simply not even have to deal with the mythic changes. First of all, if you get hit by Corrosion, which is the roly polies, if you get rolled over, uh, they apply a debuff that decreases the healing that you take. Uh, this is more severe on Mythic than it is on Heroic. And then the second major change is that Echoing Void will trigger Entropic Echo. Um, so after it explodes, it will leave behind the puddle, and you just want to move out of the puddle, then the puddle explodes as well. For the Mythic version of Echoing Void, Especially for the melee DPS, I recommend moving out of the boss's hitbox just for a moment, letting Echoing Void explode, then moving back into the boss's hitbox where it should be a safe zone um, to not get hit by the Entropic Echo. The general strategy on this fight is fairly straightforward. First of all, you want to always tank the bosses near one of the walls because this is going to make dodging acidic Akirs, the roly polies, a lot safer since generally they tend to roll through the middle of the room in one way or another. Sometimes they can roll along the edges of the room, but that is a lot more rare. So typically, if you're near one of the edges of the room, you will be a lot safer. Just like on Heroic, this fight alternates between Phase 1 and Phase 2, which is the Tekris control when you stack the bosses, and the Kazir control when you have to separate the bosses. So in Phase 1, while you have them stacked, uh, most of your range should be fairly close to the bosses, because whenever a Kier drones spawn, which is the small ads that fixate, you want to have your range DPS and range players close to the bosses so you can cleave those down. During this time, all of the adds that are alive uh, will deal increasing damage the longer they're alive. So generally, this is the easier of the two phases. While the bosses are stacked, we recommend that most of your DPS focus Tekris as their main target and cleave off of him. This is because whenever the boss is spread for phase 2, all of your raid will be stacked on Kazir. So because of this, your Tekris damage will kind of fall behind a little bit. And each time you stack the bosses back up, you will need to play catch up to get Tekris down to the same health as Kazir. Also, during Tekris control, you will have an Akir Ravager spawn. Now, this ad is fairly nasty to the tanks. It does a lot of damage. The bleed it applies deals a significant amount of damage. So your DPS typically should focus down the Akir Ravager as the highest priority target. However, if your raid has really good cleave damage and your tanks aren't really struggling with staying alive then you can choose to focus the bosses and just cleave the ravager for phase two whenever kazir gains control you will want to separate the bosses and your entire raid should move with kazir there's a few reasons for this first of all tekris does a frontal ability so it slightly limits the space that you can use around the boss and also the fact that Kazir has a cast that is pretty much mandatory you interrupt, uh, it's better for the whole raid to move with Kazir. So while the bosses are separated, a volatile drone will get empowered and start casting volatile eruption. Normally on heroic, you would simply kill this ad and the volatile eruption cast would never happen. However, on mythic, this ad has too much health. So the best way of dealing with this is to move Kazir to one of the edges of the room, have your entire raid stack there, and just use some healing cooldowns such as Devotion Aura or Barrier, Spearlink, Darkness, 
uh, rally from warriors, anything along those lines, just to help you stay alive during that huge burst of damage. And once the cast goes off, your raid will need to spread out again because you will get another cast of Echoing Void. But from there, you just essentially repeat phase one and phase two while moving around the room. Up on the screen, I have a quick graphic as far as what our raid movement and boss movement looks like. You don't need to stick to this super close. Uh, I just wanted to show you how we do it and to give you an idea of how it should be done. Essentially, you just want to start in one of the corners of the room, then work your way all around the room because every time you end up killing adds, they will leave behind puddles. So they will essentially cut off a usable area of the room. So you need to kind of navigate a little bit more carefully than you do on Heroic. So as far as the kill time that you should be looking at, um, you ideally want to kill the bosses either during their third stack phase or before that. If the fight goes any longer than the third stack phase, you will most likely run out of healing cooldowns and fall behind on damage. If you're able to make the damage check and kill the bosses before or during their third stack phase, we also recommend crowd controlling the fourth wave of darters. A very significant source of damage during this fight will come from darkers casting the psionic resonance. And if you have mages, uh, rogues, demon hunters, anything along those lines who have hard CC abilities that last a minute, um, even uh, monks can do this, we recommend that as soon as those darters spawn, just go ahead and CC them and make sure that your DPS knows not to touch these. Only kill them if they're on top of the boss. Whenever the bosses are separated, the darters are a lot more difficult to kill because they will be healing once they reach lower health. So just CCing these and not having to deal with them while burning the bosses makes it a lot easier and a lot safer to execute the last minute of the fight. For the DPS section, I mainly want to talk about a few timings and some target priorities that you should keep in mind. This is one of those fights where it's really easy to get baited into doing big damage on the wrong targets. Your general target priority should be the Cure Ravager, which spawns while the bosses are stacked, over the Cure Darters, over the bosses, over the Cure Drones. Now the Ravager will absolutely destroy your tank, so we suggest using this as your main target. You should never have an Akira Ravager up while you also have Akira Darters, so Akira Darters are about just as important as the Ravagers. You should have about 4 sets of Darters spawn throughout the fight. The first set will be shortly before 1 minute, second set will be at 2 minutes, third set will be at around 3.15, while fourth set will be at around 420. If your raid is cr crowd controlling the fourth set, then obviously you don't need to allocate cooldowns for this. But for all the other ones, uh, especially the one that spawns at two minutes and three minutes, you will need some sort of cooldowns to actually deal with these. If your raid has one or two demon hunters in it, I recommend them being the primary targets to get the mind numbing Nova cast from Kazir just because they generate some extra resources. Just ask them to kick as early as possible, and that way, if the cast goes a little bit longer, other people can back it up, and all of your DPS should absolutely try to interrupt this. Um, just let it cast a little bit before you actually interrupt to give the Demon Hunters a little bit of an advantage. Next, let's talk a little bit about the cooldown timings for doing effective damage on this fight. The cure darters that spawn just prior to 1 minute need to be killed before the bosses are separated. This is because once the bosses are separated, those darters will start to heal when they're at low health. So as soon as they spawn, you want your death knights to grip them onto the boss, and you want all your ranged DPS to swap to them. Um, this damage check is not super huge, but if you're able to kill them before the bosses are separated, you will save yourself a ton of trouble. The cure drones that spawn at around a minute and 30 have absolutely no importance. You can leave these alive even until the next set of darters spawn that is at 2 minutes. Typically, they will still just die to cleave, but I don't recommend using any cooldowns to kill these. So at 2 minutes, like I said, you get another wave of darters. These are super important to kill because the bosses are still separated, so they will be healing when they're at low health. If you have a death knight, especially a blood death knight, 
I recommend gripping two of the darters onto the boss and then mass gripping um, and dropping some sort of AoE stun on them. This will just allow your two minute classes who are popping cooldowns here to easily delete that wave of darters without them healing too much once they get to execute range. At around two minutes and 30 seconds, the bosses will be stacked back up. So if you did not use your cooldowns on the darter wave prior to this, then you should definitely use your cooldowns right here because you will be dealing very effective damage. Since the bosses are stacked, you will have a wave of drone spawn and also a ravager spawn. If you have a two minute cooldown that does very significant cleave damage, such as combustion, this is probably the best place to use it. Towards the end of the stacking phase, again, you will get a wave of darters, and these need to be single targeted down and prioritized over everything else, because once again, you need to kill them before the bosses are separated. So now we'll talk about healing hive mind. For your healing comp, you can run either four or five healers. If you're struggling with the healing on this fight, you can opt to run five and you'll probably have enough DPS anyway. This fight is one of the least strict in terms of having a meta healing comp. You can really run whatever you want, but damage reductions are quite good for specific timings. In terms of healing this fight, nothing much changes from Mythic. When the bosses swap control, which is every minute and 15 seconds, you're going to take massive raid wide AOE for the next 10 seconds. You should absolutely have big throughput and maybe some damage reduction cooldowns rolling for these timings. And in terms of assigning cooldowns, you should pay most attention to this mechanic. One important thing to note about this is that the boss does this on pull, which means that you're going to have to pump massive HPS the minute you start the fight. Additionally, every 75 seconds, the bosses will spawn a cure darters, which will chain cast psionic resonance. And every time they do that, they deal massive AOE raid damage. One way to prevent the amount of damage you can take from this ability is to crowd control the darters by polymorphing them or doing some other crowd control, etc. Another possible point of pain is the echoing void mechanic, which will happen at the times shown on screen. These don't do a ton of damage by themselves, but they often follow other dangerous mechanics and potentially could be fatal. And then finally, the biggest difference on Mythic for healers is the volatile eruption which just has too much health to DPS through, so the dominant strategy is to just let it explode and heal up that damage afterwards. These are very dangerous timings, and it happens twice in the fight, once at 150 and another time at 417. You should absolutely have damage reduction cooldowns for these timings. You can assign shouts and or darknesses to these as well, and you just want to quickly top people up after these, otherwise they can die to mechanics that happen immediately afterwards. The main difference between heroic and mythic tanking is that you want to be a little more precise with the movement, which is pretty easy given that the fight is scripted. Everything else follows the same rules, stack bosses on pull, and taunt swap ravagers at one stack. Decide which tank will take which boss before the fact, giving precedent to paladins, death knights, and demon hunters for Kazir. If you accidentally take two stacks of the ravager bleed, you should call for a blessing of protection and spam your cancel macro as it will remove the bleed entirely. As the Kazir tank, you control positioning of the raid in the spread phase. This should be near an edge of the room as the fight is significantly easier to do on the outside rather than the middle due to how the acidic Akir work. As a side note, if you are a Blood DK or a Vengeance Demon Hunter here, during the spread phase is a good time to mass grip, preferably with darters if you can. This is also a pretty good fight to set up a focus kick bind and practice using it for more high stress situations as kicks will almost always be covered by someone else in the raid as well. Since the bosses don't have any real tank mechanics that force you to hold cooldowns for, cooldowns are best used in two situations. One, when the volatile eruption explodes, especially if you are the Tekris tank as you will be alone and not in things like barrier, slink, etc or two whenever you get rolled on by accident. During the split phase, realize that the distance required between the bosses is only 20 yards, so you do not need to be on the opposite side of the room. The first split to stack maneuver occurs during Acidic Akir, so you will want to be closer to get the bosses stacked up faster. Lastly, most tanks have more than a few options for darter control. The most obvious here is grip from Death Knights, but things like Paralysis, Hammer of Justice, or Intimidating Aurora will all stop their cast and force them to stay in place, which can be hugely beneficial to DPSing them down, even if it breaks instantly.
Thank you so much for watching this video, and if it helped, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you to Shampi and Lozi for helping me out, and also if you want to read our guide over on Wowhead, the link will be in the description box.